Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. And with the U.S. Open having just completed, we had to bring Pierce Lanou on the show to recap what was a wild, wild tournament at Pinehurst number two. Um, we're going to dive right into it, Pierce. If you, By the way, golfers, if you haven't yet or you aren't doing this weekly, uh, visit secondswing.com. Check out the Sunday Swing blog that Pierce puts together for us, uh, recapping the events from the weekend in pro golf. Uh, you'll see the the rundown of all the drama that took place at Pinehurst number two. So um, it big time tournament, uh, kind of not in, in a way, a lot of things unexpected in terms of who was in contention in the sense of I, no Scotty Scheffler to be found. Um, but and then you I think Bryson is becoming that name now that is going to be there at all these majors. He was in a couple in the mix last year in 2023. This year, T6 at Augusta, runner-up by a stroke at the PGA at Valhalla, and then this week obviously wins uh, in pretty dramatic fashion at Pioneer. So, Pierce, talk to me. I mean, what did you your, – your, kind of your first reaction to everything that went down. Was this, was this Bryson earning this win, or was it more of Rory – with those couple putts down the stretch kind of giving it away at the end. Yeah, man, there's there's a lot to unpack with this yeah. one. Um, but just first impression was just like, man, like what a tournament this yeah. was. This was really fun. Um, especially after after the US Open last year with with mm-hmm. uh LACC yeah. and kind of all the the controversy versy and and just the discussions about some of the players, you know, and fans being disappointed in, in the course yeah. and the setup and everything. Just the whole way that tournament went down. Um, fast forward to this year at, at Pinehurst and a venue, you know, we, we've seen in the past and um, has just given us so many, so many memories throughout the years. And this week was just another, just so refreshing. Yeah. Such a, such a fun tournament. And, um, yeah, I was talking with some buddies yesterday, and you mentioned you mentioned Scotty kind of not being in the mix. It was not that I root against Scotty Scheffler, but it was just refreshing to yeah not to have kinda, Scotty run away with another tournament to kind of have <laughs> just a really competitive and yeah and um, exciting tournament really from start to finish. You know, the leaderboard was was always just jam packed and yeah. you know big names and um, to get back to your original question about whether Bryson earned it or Rory gagged it or you know there's a lot of ways you can probably look at that um and I think it is a combination of both in in some respects you know the the shot that Bryson hit there on on 18 Mm -hmm. out of that bunker was remarkable I mean that's an all-time shot yeah absolutely and And it's I I think any golfer would would agree that that 50 to 60 yard bunker shot is the one of the hardest in the game yeah. in any you know at any level yeah whether you're a 10 to 20 handicap just playing on the weekends or whether you're the best player in the world or mm-hmm. one of the best uh there's you know, luckily for bryson on that shot he had green to work with and the pin was in the back so mm-hmm. he could kind of play his i think he mentioned he played like a gap wedge almost and just kind of chunked it and run it that far which you can do from 50 yards away if you have the green to work with. Um, mm-hmm. But it was... Given yeah. the circumstances and... Right. It's, it's one thing to, in theory, oh, I, I think I can pull off this shot because it sets up nice with all the green. But to pull it off with up and down to win yeah. the U.S. Open. A lot can go wrong there on that shot. Um, and, you know, just after his tee shot even, the yeah. position he was in, I think, making bogey was going to be a really good score from there. Yeah. Um, you know, with with just the way the way he had to play that second shot. You know, he had that the root problem. He had the tree. Um, you know, affecting the backswing. Not really a great angle. Not really a good lie. So, um, yeah, that that was that was an all time all time par, yeah. especially under the the circumstances. You know, mm-hmm. he needed par to to win the tournament and. Um, he was able able to do it yeah and as we've remarked to on i mean the show it's the last couple majors where he's been in the mix he's brought some theater he's brought some excitement um and he has seemingly done so well i think they talked they mean 
they really beat this drum quite a bit on the broadcast and be seated about how he's engaging with the fans and he's um, not hiding his emotions and stuff. Um, and I think that's what has helped in many respects. And I think in the eyes of many people is sort of, it's sort of improved his image, his reputation. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's just so odd that I think Rory, as the last couple of years have unfolded and this whole landscape has changed, has been the the champion for the PGA Tour and has been the fan favorite for how you know the the portrayal of this division in golf, right? And Bryson was one of the guys who really championed for you know this this live tour, and then it was it's just. It's remarkable now you get to Sunday at the U.S. Open and the crowd is chanting Bryson's name while he's mm -hmm. dueling Rory down the stretch. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this isn't – we're not trying to make this a whole big PR lesson on what Bryson's done, but it's – I think it's just a credit to him for how he's um, changed I, – I don't know if he's changed himself necessarily. I think it's just the way he's presented himself has been um, improved maybe mm -hmm. and – Obviously, the game is clearly there too, yeah. and I think there was a few years there where it wasn't maybe there. Yeah. And for sure, the last two years, you know, he kind of broke out and had that fifty-eight on live um, that he shot in the last year, I think. And yeah, then, last summer. Um, obviously, now in the majors, he's in contention every single time. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's it's remarkable what he's done. And I will say, for you know, but right away, like four or five years ago, you know, obviously he bulked up he was hitting drives 350 380 400 yards um that part he's kind of simmered on that but the mm -hmm. short game has improved tremendously and in terms of equipment i always thought that was going to be an achilles heel for him just because he's stuck on this single length concept with all of his clubs shorter mm -hmm. clubs wedges being s standard i guess seven iron length and you know i guess the root fundamental that i think of is well the shorter the club the easier it is to control and when it comes to wedges like you want your lob wedge or your saint well, you, you want to have as much control on those as possible in that short area so um, obviously bryson has looked into this and researched this way more than i have so mm -hmm. um but that's just always been in my mind but his short game was unbelievable yeah in this um he's playing glide 4.0 wedges from ping the raw version um and it, they appear to also be if they're not the single length, they're certainly longer than standard. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that up and down, obviously on the last hole was insane, but I look back also to hole, I believe eight it was, where he it was long and left into on the par four. And he had a, I mean, but seemingly, he had a really good shot from there just to get up on the green. He was short sided and had about a 12 to 15 footer coming back up the hill and made it big fist pump and at that point it was kind of like all right he's not going to go away he's not hitting the ball the best mm -hmm. drives were all over the place <clears throat> but the short game saved him the whole day yeah yeah they definitely even he after the tournament mentioned in the you know the post post round interviews and stuff that like he didn't do a good job of driving the ball yesterday like he was kind of all over the he place. was um and just it, every time it seemed like he was able to to find some some way of, mm -hmm. of escaping you know relatively un yeah unharmed you know he didn't really make i know he made a couple of bogeys yesterday but you know he was able to sort of limit limit the damage yeah. and um just kind of kind of hang around which is yep. really in essence what you need to do at a u.s open when it's playing um, that tough and you kind of if you can let the others make the mistakes more so than you make the mistakes yourself, you know, in that scenario, you're going to be the winner. And really the one mistake he had was the three putt on the back nine. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, his, you know, you know, fortunately for him, it was Rory made a, the same, the same mistake twice, essentially missing mm -hmm. the short putt. But I mean, yeah, Bryson's at, uh, we were just talking about it actually uh, outside here with one of the uh, online fitters, James Tracy. And he was, we were just chatting about the equipment side and how, you know, it's, it's, we have to like consider, you know, we talked about Bryson off the tee, how little room for error there is for him when he's playing, you know, as long a shaft as possible. He's playing a driver head. That's five or six degrees aloft. 
And five degrees on the drive. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fi- yeah. So five degrees. And every time he hits the ball, it's 190, 192, 194 ball mm-hmm. speed. Just the tiniest sliver of club face open or closed or off, you know, the path where it should be like is going to make that thing go way left or right. Mm-hmm. And so, which is what we saw yesterday. Yeah. I mean, if you're yeah. not absolutely perfectly dialed, like the fact that he, I think the first few days he was bombing driver down the middle, mm-hmm. which is, I think it's, it was, it's, we don't really give enough credit to how insane that is to drive it like that with that club. Um, but the, the build that he puts together with his clubs, you know, he's got the LA golf shafts that are Bryson specific. I imagine his five degree drive for the crank fire um, formula fire is also a Bryson specific plus the fairy woods. He's got mm-hmm. like a mini driver from crank that they built for him. Yeah. The three wood. They're all he's taken club fitting to like the absolute max level. Yeah. As someone just to complete. He's a nerd about it, mm-hmm. but he's like everything needs to be exactly how it is for my swing, which is so outrageous compared to everybody else that plays golf. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as as gearheads, which most of us here at Second yeah. Swing are, this is like the most fun bag of equipment to, yeah, to dive into and just really look at all of the the specifications and you know down to the the fraction that he you know he he puts a lot of a lot of time and a lot of stock into mm-hmm. getting it perfectly right and um, you know it, we're seeing it pay dividends this year. You know, he he had the those custom 3D printed irons that I think got like approved on the the conforming list like the week before Augusta, yep, something like that. So like, you know, it's just really cool to see like a guy who is always just kind of in that pursuit for for better. Yep. And even if it's by the smallest of fractions, if it's if it's going to perform better, you know, he's going to, he's going to play it, which I just think it's fun to see his bags always evolving and he's always changing stuff up and, you know, just trying to find ways to improve, which is what we do as golfers. Um, Mm -hmm. and you've got the putter there. That's one thing I feel like he's had that same putter for even back to his PGA tour days. We've we've seen him with that putter, which was a big, a big key for him yesterday. Yeah. So this is the sick, Pro C series is the, I guess, the model, but this is specifically a head that was a prototype for Bryson. Um, so it's got, you know, this is, you can kind of tell too with the, where the shaft would enter this. It's got that crazy lie angle. So mm-hmm. his lie angle, I believe, is something around 80 degrees. So super upright. And you can obviously see that when he's yeah. lined up. Like he's as vertical as you can get. Yeah, the standing length directly and, the, over and it. the lie angle on that thing is insane. Yeah. It's kind of what gives him that like robotic. Right, mechanical look on the greens, which it's like, honestly, I wish I could putt like yeah. a robot. Because I mean, it <laughs> it looks super uncomfortable. Yeah. Like I, I mean, I can't imagine like, you know, if you were to do like a two hour, three hour practice session on the greens, like I feel like I'd be sore. Yeah, your, after what he's doing, back here. and your shoulders it feels like they would start to, right, kind of get tight and yeah start start aching a little bit i mean i kind of get that after an hour of putting right normally of nor- yeah normal putting yeah. Uh, but you know it it's clearly working for him and he's been like you said he's using he's been using the same putter he's been a really good putter yeah he always has been a good for putter. a while i think when he first jumped on you know tour you know shortly after winning like the usam he was well he certainly didn't hit it very far compared to what he does now but also he was putting was kind of the, the weakness mm-hmm. and then this sort of arm lock trend kind of picked up a little bit more and he jumped right into it and um, it's clearly worked for him so um, we've talked about the woods we've talked about the irons a little bit the kind of um, you know 3d printed I think the Avoda is the brand name mm-hmm. prototype again built only for Bryson and nobody else very strong iron lofts as has kind of been a, a hot button topic for him um, you know he's hitting I think there was one of the par threes yesterday was uh, 197 and he took pitching mm-hmm. wedge everybody else is taking yeah, seven 175 iron, you know? into um yeah what hole was that they were talking about that maybe 16 i was just i was just remembering rory hit a seven iron and then you know bryson's up there 15 minutes later yeah. with pitching wedge and i mean of course it's it's going to be a comment and that's fine but you know he can loft them or name them whatever he wants yeah but and he says it's because he generates so much spin, and he does. I mean, mm-hmm. you, can, you can just see in the way he swings how much speed he generates all that spin. And so, 
he's kind of have to manipulate his lofts really weirdly. He's got basically five wedges in his bag if you count his mm-hmm. pitching wedge. Yeah. He's got his pitching wedge from his iron set, and then he's got four ping glide 4.0 mm-hmm. wedges as well. And he needs all of those because of the gapping that he produces was, is just insane. Yeah. Like he's got a five degree driver. I believe it's a 10 degree three wood and or a mini driver and then a 13 degree three wood or something crazy like that. So he's got, I mean, he has to have weird lofts in his irons to make that work. Yeah. It's just a, it's definitely like it, it is, it just is the most unique yeah. bag of clubs that we'll, we'll see. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of, of Bryson mm-hmm. and, and who he is and, and what he does. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly it's certainly fun to fun to talk about. And yeah, I would I do wonder if we'll ever get to a point where three D printed irons are going to be available at retail. Normally, I doubt it, just because yeah. of how expensive three D printing a set like that is with that unique face curvature and all that. But um, yeah, Bryson he delivers the goods. He 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 puts butts in seats, as they say. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm curious now moving forward because. There's maybe I don't want to put a say it's a it's a responsibility he has now, but you know this this looming uh, you know agreement or coming together of the two sides of pro golf right now is you know there's been rumors of an outline to, that's been formed or or whatever like it's almost like Bryson can be that guy that can unify them in a way. You know, he's got fans on both sides mm-hmm. that are that love him. So I don't know. I again, this is maybe a topic for another day, but um, he's clearly done something to, you know, he's he's won over golf. Yeah. Uh, media fans um, seems like players from both sides um, seem to love him. So, yeah, I mean, just to kind of to butt in, I agree with I definitely agree with the the side like if you just look at it from like a golf standpoint you take away the pga the live you take take that stuff away and just look at big picture like i genuinely think bryson just loves the game of golf yeah and um i think that's kind of what people are starting to realize he's he's just obsessed yeah you know to a point where he's building his entire bag from scratch that nobody else could really go get one of his clubs or anything like that right so i mean say what you will about all the all the antics and in the off course debates and, and you know, the, the tours and, and whatever, but the bottom line is he's good for the game. And, um, I think, you know, he's just going to continue to, to do his thing. And yeah, maybe like you said, he'll be kind of the, one of the guys that kind of spearheads that, mm-hmm. that bridge whenever we get to that point. But, um, yeah, I mean, just just really, really fun to watch yeah. this week. The one thing I'll add to on Bryce, and then we can kind of move to Rory maybe. But I've said this before, and I think maybe even on this show, but I was, you know, I say it to my coworkers or friends all the time: is when I was in high school, which is only you know, which is 10, 12 years ago now. Golf wasn't cool. Mm-hmm. I played golf all the time. Oh yeah. Um, and my friends and I weren't the cool kids in, in no. school. You know. Um, the cool kids played football or, or were track and field athletes or, you know, that type of thing. Um, I feel like Bryson can be the guy, and I, you're certainly seeing it already, is golf's becoming a cool thing for kids to pick up on. Yeah. Even if it's just a, a you know, leisurely activity, aside from your the, maybe the sports that you're already in. Or maybe it's, I, I know for a fact, high school programs are growing in size too. But Bryson, with the YouTube personality and the content there with, you know, yeah. the, the videos he appears in, that's the type of thing that that young generation looks to. They're mm-hmm. not like those, you know, 15, 16 year old kids. Not a lot of them are setting aside time Saturday and Sunday to watch, you know, the Charles Schwab challenge or right. whatever. You know, they're they're posting up on YouTube and watching, you know. Bryson uses hickory clubs yeah. and try to shoot a score mm-hmm. or he and Garrett Clark try to break 50, that type of thing. Um, so it's I, that, that, and that, and you mentioned the whole growing the game part that I think is where it's being, you're showing the biggest impact is just yeah. this younger generation. He's relating to them quite a bit with these, I agree. with yeah. this type of thing. Yeah. And, and 
I mean, the the audience he's reaching through channels like YouTube mm-hmm. and and just the different fun golf content that he does is yeah, it's huge. Like it's limitless, really. And like you said, that's definitely something the younger generation is really keyed into and 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 paying attention to and um it's yeah it's great it's mm-hmm. great for the game it might slow down pace of play in your casual rounds if, which yeah. is one thing that yeah if you're uh, has become a little bit of an issue in my opinion but, well yeah um that's I, a story that's a topic for <laughs> for another it definitely time has it's a good thing that all the tea times are filled up mm-hmm. it's just take makes your round take a little bit longer correct but um yeah i mean kudos to bryson i didn't you know it's it's really cool to see how he's been he's become so beloved and i think it's well deserved just i mean obviously he has a tremendous all-around game seems like he's just kind of a kid in a candy store when he's on the golf course and he's interacting with the fans so really cool um now the flip side is our our discussion on rory here i kind of want to like so you kind of mentioned a little bit of both i as as i was watching again kudos to bryson for that up and down at the end but it really felt to me a little bit more like Rory kind of gave that away. Mm-hmm. It was, I mean, you have a two and a half foot putt that you miss. And then on the last hole, you still put yourself in good position after, you know, maybe an unfortunate lie off the tee and you still put, hit a really good pitch shot to f- less than four feet. You make that, you're going to, I mean, I I think slightly I'd, I'd say is more of Rory giving that away at the end. Um, which has to just bite because he's yeah. been so close so many times in the last 10 years. And now, I, I mean, he's going to hop hop in his car today or wherever he might be going. Maybe he's, I don't know if he's playing this week for sure or not um, at the Travelers, but, you know, he's going to, if he turns on PJ to a radio, he's one of the first things he's going to hear is Rory so close yet again. Mm-hmm. And it seems to happen once or twice a year at this point where yeah. he's that close. <clears throat> just yeah. can't quite capitalize. Yeah, I really, really feel for him. Um, yeah, I mean, you kind of mentioned how, you know, the last 10 years, he said so many close calls and majors where it just felt like he was going to win, and then things just don't mm-hmm. seem to go his way. And, and, and yesterday just kind of felt like a culmination of that past decade, really, of of golf that he's played at such a high level and just hasn't been, hasn't been rewarded and hasn't, hasn't been able to break through since, um, you know, 2014. But, um, I wrote down a couple of things that I thought were really interesting from yesterday that I wanted to remember Mm. that I wanted to talk about. So there's obviously like the big glaring and obvious mishaps were those two short putts. Yeah. Right. Um, the one on 18 and then, um, you know, the one was it 16. That was yeah. the two and a half foot one. Like those are the ones that the people, you know, the, the casual golfer that's watching sees and just, you know, that's what people are going to remember. Yep. And that's what everyone's talking about today. But, you know, I think the the underlying issue yesterday with Rory was was the iron play. Oh, yeah. He, I mean, he had how many birdies did he he had to make? They were over twenty foot putts. You yeah, know, they had like, that stretch there over through the turn, the nine, eleven, twelve, or whatever the holes yeah. were, where he had to make. I mean, his birdie putts he made birdies, which was great, but they were all long putts. Mm-hmm. He was never really close on an approach. Yeah, so he on Sunday out of seventy four players, he was 69th in strokes yeah, gained approach. So he lost like almost two strokes on approach to the field yesterday, um, and he only hit ten greens. So. That's not Rory like at all. Yeah, I mean, you, you think about it, and at a course like that, if you're if you only hit ten greens, like odds are you're not going to get up and down. No, you're right. eight or nine times out of those ten. It's probably going to be more like five or six. Right. If you're lucky. If you're hitting ten out of the eighteen of those greens, there you're you can write yourself down for probably five bogeys. Yeah, and he he did a really good job actually yesterday of of limiting damage mm-hmm. and and he that did. was thanks to the putter yeah through the first i think 15 holes he had gained almost five strokes on the greens yeah compared to the field um and i think he ended up finishing yeah he finished eighth in putting yesterday 
despite those two. I mean, despite that's despite the two short. That misses. is a, that is a different per- perspective. I haven't seen. I mean, I've read, I've watched, you know, all kinds of, you know, U.S. Open recap yeah. stuff in the last twelve hours or twenty four hours, and that is a perspective I haven't heard or seen until yeah. right now. It's like I just, you know, he still putted really well yesterday. Being the nerd that I am, you know, I just wanted to kind of dive into the stats a little bit deeper and kind of get a different perspective on it. And um, yeah, I saw a stat that was like through. 14 or 15 holes or whatever like he was leading the field in putting he you know it was like almost plus five strokes gained putting and then in like the last three or four holes he lost like Mm -hmm. two strokes but he still had a really good day on the greens and um yeah i just think that his his iron game really let him down yesterday and yeah there was one there was one that um will probably be forgotten but i think it was the fifth hole the par five he was like 200 out in the fairway and he made six. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which for me, I, I, I remember the shot vividly. Obviously this is, you know, audio only in, in a sense. So we can't really show it per se, but um, the shot is a five iron from 230. He, it was, it missed probably sitting in the middle, middle of the green yeah. about 20 feet from the pin. He was probably another four feet from that being the case, but yeah. you know, the Pinehurst slopes on that false front got him and he ended up in a really bad mm-hmm. spot where even Cantley's playing partner, Patrick Cantley hit a similar shot, ended up in the green side bunker, had a really good up and down opportunity. But that's kind of, I didn't want to call that unfair because obviously the players know ahead of time yeah. where they have to hit, where they can't miss. But that is just, it's a really, really good shot from 235 yards to put it where yeah. he did and to end up then falling down that slope into that, kind of wire grass area Mm -hmm. dirty sand area you know with an awful eye i think he was like in a footprint yeah Yeah, it's just a a terrible break and and really the point being like for him i think to have gotten over that hurdle yesterday i think just the irons needed to be a little sharper because at pinehurst if you miss by even a few yards you you see what happens and and the ball's rolling off the green so um yeah Yeah, that was definitely a two-shot swing there just being a fraction sharper on that shot maybe you know carry it a couple yards further yeah or something would have been a, a two-shot swing and he probably wins a tournament yeah so that was just kind of a a perspective that i kind of wanted to to look at for um you know a little deeper than you know yeah. the surface level glaring two footer and I four do, footer that he missed i do relate this a little bit to i saw someone make this comparison and it's it's an optimistic way of looking at it for rory is the way Dustin Johnson fell apart at Chambers Bay. Mm-hmm. And I shouldn't say fall apart, but, you know, he three-putted and from relatively close range at Chambers Bay in 2015 to keep himself out yeah. of the playoff and when lose Jordan to Spieth. Jordan Spieth won, yeah. Yep. The very next year, DJ won at Oakmont. Uh, so that's one way to, yeah. I guess, spin it if you're a Rory fan. Um, and he has gone back-to-back runner runners-up now at the U.S. Open. Uh, so it's – and then if you look at his finishes at – U.S. Opens the last four or five years, it's ninth, fifth, second, second. Yeah. So yeah, he's, and he's the, knocking on the door for the sure. The Open Championship is a very similar record. Yeah. So, you know, coming up in, in about a month, he's going to have another great opportunity. Yeah. So I, I hope, I really hope this isn't the end of Rory, and I really don't think it is, but it's just like, I feel like this one in particular was just, yeah, a little worse than all these other ones. He's I had. agree. It's just those two really short putts. Well, and you know, a, a couple inches here, a couple inches there, and he's the champion. Yeah, I mean, and and two shot lead with what five four to, to play. play, four to play. Yeah, he's on the fifteen t with a two shot lead. Which, yeah, I mean, and I really think that, you know, kind of back to Bryson just briefly. The the shot of the day for him was definitely that bunker shot on 18 in the save that won him the tournament but i think almost just as important as that that up and down was his tee shot on 13 the drivable Mm -hmm. par four when he hit it's like 25 feet yep you know at that point he was he was trailing by two like he had to make birdie there and he said that was kind of lose like it wasn't the tournament wasn't getting away from him but it kind of it was close if he didn't make a birdie there it would have gotten away from him at that point. Yeah, and he said in his post round interview, like at that point, like he saw on the leaderboard, like Rory was ahead by two, and he was like, "Oh, oh no, like yeah. <laughs> this is not good." And then, you know, he he's like, "I need to make birdie here," and and he hit that 
just gorgeous. Oh yeah, towering I mean, I three wood. You could have you couldn't have placed it better than that. Yeah. So I, that was just another another moment from yesterday where I think Bryson really, really went out and and won that tournament. Yeah. So mm-hmm. just wanted to highlight yeah. that. I mean, there's it, that's how any any major is for the most part, unless you're Tiger winning by twelve or fifteen. Mm-hmm. But like, there's an element of luck involved too. Um, that you know, like with Bryson going out there and, and hitting the shots he did kind of also hurts Rory and vice versa. You know, the way you know, Rory's missed a couple of short putts also helped Bryson. It happens, but um, I think I think we're certainly not done with Bryson con- contending in majors. He's going to keep doing that. Mm-hmm. He's clearly at the top of his game. Um, I'm excited to see what happens moving forward. With, yeah, I'm really excited for the Open to see what he does there because yeah. I think historically he's probably been his worst than yeah, before. Yeah, I mean, he's he's traditionally never really uh, dealt with those conditions very well and that style of play. But I think if we were to maybe, you know, I guess label a U.S. open course that is similar to an open, Mm, right. It might be Pinehurst number two, just the, 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 the runoffs um, off the greens and all the putting off of the, off the, you know, putting from off the green or, you know, dealing with the, weird lies and yeah. stuff. I mean, wasn't obviously the, as windy or cold or anything, but yeah, there's, there's a, an element of that, that there's definitely some similarities. Yeah. The, the short game creativity is certainly there um, where I don't think it maybe at was as much in the past. And maybe that's been mm-hmm. a reason for a lack of success out there. So and his game is definitely going to be in probably the best shape it's ever been in. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be uh he'll, he'll be a big, he'll be a big talking point. Oh yeah. Definitely. Um, Give me, we'll kind of start to wrap up here, but I want I want to get maybe a name or two from you from this week that you were kind of impressed by or, or surprised by. Um, I'll, I'll call out a couple names to kind of get it rolling here. Yeah. Um, I'll call out Pavone, uh-huh. Matthew Pavone. Absolutely. Um, he, I think he's been pretty darn consistent since yeah. winning at the Farmers. I think he's got a pretty promising career ahead of him. I don't yes. want to say he for sure he's going to win a major or anything like that, but he's got a lot more tour wins. Um, in his future, he clearly yeah. has a game for it, and he's contending quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And then I want to call out: Is it Neil Shipley, the yeah, the amateur? amateur? Yeah, he's got a future too. Yeah, um, he's gonna, I think this was his last amateur tournament, term- tournament as an as an amateur. Yeah, yeah I think so. and it won't be long before he's yeah. winning on the on the stage, and he'll probably win a major too. Yeah, he's soon. a baller. He yeah, because was he at the masters too low yep. am low am at yeah. the Mas- at, at augusta yeah. and um did he win the usam last year too is that what it was um no the usam last year was nick dunlap oh that's right yeah yeah that makes sense because he and he's already won so, on tour so yeah um yeah he, but he's clearly a stud and um he'll won't be long before he's up there so i kudos to those two guys for yeah. their performances um i know kind of the way the golf broadcasts are is, you know, they, those guys don't get a ton of attention. The, the kind of the golf sickos like us are the mm-hmm. ones, especially with Shipley, the, like you had the two amateurs going for low am yeah. on Sunday paired together. Like that would have been a fun one to see a little more of on the broadcast personally. Um, I know the more, I guess, casual fans weren't really tuning in for that, mm-hmm. but um, those two guys, um, Shipley especially, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what he'll do for sure uh, in in the future here. Yeah, and then just a couple other couple other uh, shout outs were um, a couple local amateurs, Frankie Sappin. And, yeah. Um, I'm blanking on on the second one. Um, I can't remember his name, but yeah, there was two there was two uh, Minnesotans out there this week. Uh, amateurs that both made the weekend, mm-hmm. and um, I think that was Frankie's first first major appearance. Well, Frankie's so. been lighting it up. He has, yeah. He had the, the 50, 59 He's... on the Corn Ferry Tour a few weeks ago, and yeah, um, has been posting some really good finishes. So, you know, really exciting to to kind of yeah. see some Gunner Broin. Yep, that's that's it from Broin, Shorewood, yep. Minnesota. Yep. Um which is just west of here, I think. Yeah, where uh, where where we are in Eden Prairie. Um, yeah, Gunnar Boyne, Boyne had a really, he shot 72 in the final round yeah. too. So, um, Nothing kid to... can play for sure. And then, yeah, Frankie, uh, Sapin actually gets fit by Tyler Fitzel, yeah. um, at, or has been fit, I guess, by Tyler Fitzel at our Minnetonka store. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's, and I know they've been communicating throughout the year on, you know, nearly winning on the corn Ferry tour and, yeah, you know, so, so just wanted to kind of shout out those two guys and, um, you know, really, really fun to see. 
fun to see guys like that mm-hmm. uh, have success out there on the on the biggest yeah, stage. It is. It is. That's what I like about the U.S. Open, and you know, obviously the quote unquote open qualifying aspect right. of it. But it's you get a lot of these corn fairy guys, or maybe challenge tour, or you know, DP World tour guys that traditionally don't maybe they don't have a tour card right but they can easily just as easily as some of these other guys earn their way in yeah to a major yeah um, by just playing well in a couple qualifiers and so that's a really cool aspect of of these of this major in particular so um, yeah and then um just a couple more uh tony finau yeah really uh really fun to see him kind of play well again at a, at a major. Yep. Um, you know, he's kind of had a really weird year. He's, I think he's been really good statistically ball striking wise. And, um, his putting has just kind of really let him down this season, but, you know, seeing him kind of contend again and, and kind of get back, back into that mm-hmm. major championship form that we've kind of gotten used to seeing the past few years was encouraging. I think going forward for him the rest of the year, um, and then Ludwig Ober again. Yeah. I mean, the finish obviously wasn't what he was probably hoping for, but I just love how he's always smiling out there. You yeah, know? he's like even he had that uh, the shot where he was feet were in the bunker, the ball's basically like at his waist. Yeah, and he's you know taking the putter. Yeah, you know hockey style and hitting it. Um, so fun he's just to watch, he's just yeah. laughing about it. Um, but yeah, those two guys. I think both of them actually kind of the what derailed both of their their chances really i think saturday was the 13th hole they both made seven there triple bogey Mm -hmm. kind of in similar fashion you know i think ludwig opted to use the wedge around that green and kind of pitched one long and then pitched one back over and then i think tony tried to putt those and he kind of did the same thing and, and they both made triples there and kind of uh kind of fell back a ways if you will but uh, Tony actually finished really strong yesterday. I think he shot three under on the yeah. back nine to post, what was he, third? Mm-hmm. So, or maybe fourth, I don't know. Yeah. He and had Matsuyama, too, another yeah. strong performance for him. But, yeah, Tony, I remember what was it? it was probably four, five, six years ago where he was kind of just a top ten machine in, mm-hmm. in the majors. Yeah. And had sort of maybe lost a little bit of that the last few. Um, but for a while there, he, I mean, he was right in the mix the whole yeah. way. And, yeah, he, he almost won that, that Masters the year that Tiger... Yeah. Yeah, he was right there. 2019, and I know he's had a couple other good showings at Augusta. And, yeah, and he's um, one of those kind of, I mean, I know there's so many of these guys on tour, but that that family man that, you know, he and his his crew, that they, from what I understand, following on, on social media, yeah. they're traveling the whole crew to as many of the events as they yeah. can. You know, the, yeah, just a great all guy the kids, that, the wife, like they all go. Easy to easy to root for, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's been, it's been a good week. It's been a fun week, uh, an awesome tournament for sure. Um, and obviously we're going to be tuned into the open coming up. Uh, but when we also, we should note too, for, um, those listening is we're going to have Kevin Kraft on the show here, uh, to talk about the U S senior open, which he has qualified for. Uh, Exciting. so that'll be a lot of fun to follow him there. We're going to get the load on from him on, you know, the course, what he's expecting for the week, what his kind of, uh, routine is and all those things. So, um, look for that next week, but otherwise Pierce, uh, thank you for, joining discussing a very fun event um Absolutely. make sure you guys are staying staying tuned to secondswing.com for the sunday swing every well we post it every monday i know you write it every sunday night um and golfers make sure you're subscribed to the podcast on whatever platform you listen to or of course subscribe on youtube where we post the video format as well so thanks again pierce and awesome. we'll catch you guys next time thanks drew